This is Brother Ron, and welcome to We All Be News Radio and TV, the news free Dixie for the 21st century. They got this stupid thing where if you have some success in life, you ain't a man. You're supposed to be a thug. If right. you got a, a job where you wear a, a suit and tie, let alone a custom-made one, and it looks like it's got taste and it's elegant, mm-hmm. something's supposed to be wrong with you. You're supposed to be running around looking like you ought to be pushing a, a grocery cart with lawn bags in it. Mm-hmm. Brother, you know, <laughs> like you down in the brother. Just cause he pimping, man. Like that's what a brother got to do. No, it's not what you have to do, fool. There is nothing manly about pimping. That's about as low down and scurrilous and slimy as you can get it being a pimp. The only thing worse than pimps are child molesters. Mm. Wow. But wait, what? What makes a woman want a pimp or want to be on? I have met no. some women. Okay, they don't. Okay, what is the issue? What is the? Let me tell you how the pimp game works. Okay, tell me. Preacher sets it up. Mama, grandmama, and aunts and their friend girls, they go to church all the time. They take their babies along with them. Mm-hmm. They're so young, they don't know what they're getting except propaganda. The preacher's telling all of the grown women that they're no good low-down sinners. They're going straight to hell, but for the preacher and Jesus. So, okay, when grandmama sells two pieces more pie than anybody else, she gets stood up in front of the uh, congregation and recognize. See, people have a need to be accepted as they perceive themselves. So the whole sits up there and thinks she's low down, ugly, dumb, and stupid. Nobody likes her. And if they say she looks pretty, which she might be, if she's intelligent, which she might be, then they're just trying to run game on her and get in her draw, which they get anyway if they got a few dollars. So she sells more nookie than the pimp's bottom hole does on Thursday night. She gets to walk in with the pimp when, on his arm in the club, looking mm-hmm. just like she came out of Black Panther magazine, uh, movie. You right. know, so uh, they want to be accepted as they perceive themselves. They think they're dumb, stupid, ugly, ignorant, and the pimp see, tells them they're dumb, stupid, ugly, and ignorant but he convinces them he stays there with them and all the rest of them just trying to use her except him. So she gives him all her money. Bitch, where my money? You know, like, mm-hmm. don't be hiding my money. Well, hell, get your ass out there. Bend over, drop your drawers to your ankle and take one up your backside. And a lot of them, a lot of pimps do, believe me. Wow. Pimp ain't high on the man scale. Mm. And, uh, you know, it's like, I can't get away. He won't let me. Then keep your ass off the whole track. If you stay away from the whole track, he's scared to come where you are. He ain't going to do a damn thing, but you got your dumb ass out on the whole track. Oh, that's some interesting stuff. Wow. So, I, you know, I can't go. Pimps can't turn anybody out. They claim they can, but they can't. All they can do is parasitically be adapted to recognizing women that have extremely low self-esteem and want somebody to tell them they ain't worth a goddamn and then do a few little nice things like pat them on the head, but most of the time treat them like they're sluts and hoes because that's the way they perceive themselves. I just, I think people need to hear what you I mean. This is powerful information because I have met uh, former sex workers who come from uh, the church, who come out of church home, fathers, grandfathers, ministers, but they end up becoming, you know, sex workers and stuff with those type of guys. No, well, look, the pimp, let me tell you, I uh, mean, Marvin Ballin, Stanley Fink, Melvin Turner, and a few other folk used to represent most of the pimps and hoes in Memphis back in the early 80s. Mm-hmm. All right. A pimp can't turn no girl into no hoe, but the preacher can. He just recognizes that she's already been turned that way. 
And in fact, it's not just the preacher, it's her grandmama, mama, and her aunt that turn her into the hole with the preacher. Wow. And the pimp just looks at it and say, instinctively almost, yeah, there goes somebody I can be a parasite on. Yeah, I remember one pimp, he was a gorilla pimp. I mean, mm. he was really awful. Women thought he was good looking, tall and strong, but, you know, he used to, he jacked up his mama, jacked up his sisters, you know, mm. drug one chick around on uh, chains behind his Cadillac, ground her kneecaps off, you know, but he was scared of his two ex-wives because they sat there and had his bluff in. He mm. was scared of them. Wow. But every other woman was nothing but a piece of trash. She couldn't stand his mama. Mm -hmm. And see, that's one of the requirements for pimps. They secretly hate their mamas because the mamas haven't done much to show their manhood and basically have enabled what the fool has become. Mm -hmm. So he finds these women that have been crippled and have low self-esteem and whose mothers and grandmothers, sometimes not the mama, but an aunt or a grandmother saying, I just know the Lord does put a trial and a travail on me. He going to be making you into a slut. You look too pretty. All these men's going to be trying to be around you. Lord, what a trial and trip Jesus done put on me. I know you just going to be one of them awful low-class women. See, they keep telling the girl that it becomes self-fulfilling. Mm -hmm. Pimp just walks in and recognizes what he sees. They might confuse themselves and claim to be turning somebody out, but they aren't turning them out. They're just parasites, and they recognize a, a viable host when they see one. Well, let me ask you this: Would a uh, could a, a former hoe make a good housewife? No. <laughs> why? Why? Tell me why. This is interesting. One of the problems is if she's inclined to do that, she's also inclined to try and be a pimp herself. Mm. And her method of dealing with the opposite sex is to tear them down into manageable pieces. How many times have you heard a sister say, I got to tear that Negro down into manageable size? He think he all this and that. I got to show him what he worth. Right. So that's worked. just like how the pimp works. I have heard of women that way, go ahead. They've got they've had some ferocious female pimps too. Y'all gonna say they there's some women that used to be stone. They used to be the they become the battle. Yeah, uh, that yeah. I can be the turn a bit too. Ike wasn't the pimp. He was or wasn't. He was not. Was Tina a pimp? I ain't saying, but you know, there are those who might say she alleged she was. I think I had I had Turner got a bum rap from that movie. That movie over exaggerated. Yeah, really I happened. talked to him at some great length. He was really disturbed by that. We had about a two hour conversation. Wow. After the last show I did with him aired, uh, mm -hmm. we were in a place called Spago. I heard of Spago, right? Yeah, yeah. Wow. I mean, but I, guy, the chef is Wolfgang Puck. Wolfgang uh -huh. Puck. He's married to a sister, right? Wolfgang, Wolfgang Puck. What? He's married to a black woman, Wolfgang. I don't know. I okay. Don't know that's right, but he's one hell of a cook. All right, yeah, all right. But my understanding is they blocked Ike from getting his story out when he wrote his autobiography, The Distributor. Well, they did. We okay. talked about it. He just said, man, I signed a release. I didn't know they were going to do me that kind of way. See, and I know. From growing up in L.A., we used to see Ike all the time. He, he and Tina had matching Rolls Royces. One, I think, was cream and the other one was coffee. Wow. And I can't remember which one drove which. And we couldn't at the time either. But if he waved and it was Ike, he would have his homeboy stop. And he'd start telling you about staying in school, get your act together, and have the homeboy go get french fries, hamburgers, and Cokes. And we'd talk. Oh, wow. Tina, she'd roll down the window, give you the, the shoot you the bird and start telling you some little end, this, that, and the other. Don't you dare presume that you could say something to her. Wow. Ain't that something? He wasn't but like five feet tall. Right. But what 
My thing about Ike, uh, Tina, folks were crazy about her. And she kept his last name, I see. Yeah. And her family said, even but, she said you know, that the movie was over there. Let me yeah. make a long story short. Mm-hmm. When I ran into Ike, he and his new wife had uh, a, a charity. Okay. What it was is they were rescuing abused women. Really? If he, a woman left the guy that was abusing her, then the money, the automobiles, and the financing they gave her or provided for her became a gift. If she went back, then it became a loan. I was doing that before yeah, he died? What he was doing. Yeah. Why are we not talk? Why do people don't talk about this? Because it, it ain't fit in the picture. That was part of this long calculated thing wow. to emasculate the country and to make women and men look like villains. That's that hashtag me too thing where every woman is a victim when sometimes it's the other way around. I saw her do a lot of violence to him. Oh, Tina, Tina Turner? Uh, yeah, unprovoked. Some extreme violence. Here's my thing too. I read, I think around the time he died about I'm a little bit over 10 years ago in a magazine that Ike was not on drugs. That if he caught people using drugs at the beginning of his career, he would kick, kick them out the band. That his hey, abuse boy. came in when he was on drugs. When he got on drugs, then when he started tripping or messing up. Well, I never saw him on drugs. When I saw him, he would be lecturing up on not using them. See, <laughs> they did a number on Ike, man. They just destroyed see, him. See, when we're nine, ten years old, you know, they had that I'm blue, I'm blue, shooby dooby dooby do, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, my for- a fortune teller told me my love with you was true. That was like ninety fifty nine or something fifty eight. Mm-hmm. And every time he saw us, he'd tell us to you know keep our nose clean, don't do drugs, stay in school. You know. Wow, he wasn't the founding father of rock and roll. He was a music genius, man. I just said that people yeah, remember him for that beating of Tina Turner's clothes. <laughs> and I saw her hit him with a big one of these thick rakes with a cap iron head on it because she didn't think he was working hard enough on a new song. <laughs> I used to get abused by Tina like that. <laughs> yeah, that kind of stuff. He, She's like a gorilla pill, man. There barbecue going on. <laughs> and we were about three or four houses down. He saw us. We were out there throwing a football. I was in high school. He came over, shook hands, and did mm-hmm. his usual spiel about stay drug free, stay in school. It's good we playing ball, but you know. Don't let it get in the way of getting your head together, blah, blah, blah. And he just said he, you know, he was stuck on a song and he was doing some gardening to clear his thoughts. She came out there hollering while he's down on his knees with a trowel, yelling about hurry up. He said, well, baby, you know, I'm just trying to get my thoughts together. And she started cussing at him. He said, you know, there's some kids down there. Watch your mouth. She came, grabbed this rake and started beating him across the shoulders with it. Hmm. From Nutbush, the girl from Nutbush, he from Clarksdale. Yeah, Nutbush. They're actually in Nutbush, Nutbush, Tennessee. I saw it years ago. Mm-hmm. They used to ride a motorcycle, mm-hmm. and they had a convenience store, old one that was still open. And in the bushes next to it, they had a sign that said "25 miles an hour, no motorcycles allowed." Wow. Mm, that's like a scary place. <laughs> but see, that that's imagery. Now, I don't know. We still drifted away from all this other stuff that was out there people wanted to talk about. You know, they're talking about civility right now. I don't like this civility stuff because civility to me is code for you get to tell all the lies you want. And people are supposed to politely just suggest that you might be in error rather than you just lying through your teeth about it. Yeah, I'm, 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 go ahead, sir. I'm sorry. I just love it that Trump gets them so flabbergasted when he just says, go F yourself. But it's strange, though. It's really strange. He getting treated worse by the pre, uh, President Obama ever thought he would. Uh, they ain't really pre- treat Obama that bad in comparison to Trump. Let me tell you something about white folks. Okay. If you're a white folk, you get a free pass unless you are an embarrassment to them. Mm-hmm. Don't be a traitor to the white wing. See, that's this other thing. 
America is not only becoming emasculated, it is becoming extremely class conscious. Mm-hmm. They'd like to put all these rednecks in their place. Actually, rednecks and black men ought to have a lot in common. We all get jacked around in the job place, so we ought to make common cause. The powers that be have a vested interest in having each other, each of us that are the other's throats. Mm-hmm. Same. They didn't want this kind of white boy to get an education. See, when you get an education, you're that kind of white boy, what do you become? Uh, you, what, what was that, Judge? Bill Clinton. You become Bill Clinton, okay. In other words, if you're that kind of white boy and you get an education, you become Bill Clinton. You are a threat to their system. They don't like that happening. Mm. So they want you to be satisfied with working a blue-collar job. Mm-hmm. As long as those blue-collar jobs are available and sufficiently lucrative, they don't want the white boys in that level of things smartening up because they'd raise too much hell. Mm. So they get them and black folks squabbling about the good paying blue collar jobs. Right. When both groups ought to be able to lift themselves up with some cooperative action. Mm. So you see what happened when we get people like that that kinda of like you look at Huey Long, they killed him because he was that type of white boy. Yeah, um, but he was back in long time ago. When I mean, the thirties were it was very revolutionary. We almost went to revolutionary lengths in the thirties, though. The thirties were a very powerful time for union organizing and stuff. See, so FDR came along with something to say in common man, so he wasn't mm-hmm. supposed to do that. Mm-hmm. FDR wasn't bad for black. But his family was racist. They used to be staunch supporters of the Confederacy. Yeah, yeah. We got the Teddy Roosevelt statue in New York still with him with his two servants or darker servants talking by his horse. Teddy Roosevelt was a flat out racist. He issued an executive order to the army to, and with any excuse, put as many black soldiers as you can contrive to do so in front of firing squads and execute them. Mm. But they watch, watch his legacy too. That's what they do. They love, you know, they heroes. They invent Hollywood style narratives for them. Uh, he kept talking about the white man's burden, or it was a disgrace to the white race. Mm. But he did invite Booker T. Washington to the White House for dinner. And he got he invited that a lot of pushback. <laughs> he invited that useless. Tank at your head to the White House. Mm. The only utility Booker T. Washington had was to the white folk by advocating the black folk to be satisfied with where you were. He was a bona fide enemy of the people. I'm going to ask you this. I mean, I want to contrast. W. B. Du Bois told everybody about it. Well, I want to get your take on what's now. Compare and contrast Booker T. Washington with, let's say, Omarosa. What are your thoughts about Omarosa? Is she a hero to black folks? What's Omarosa done? I mean, you know, she recorded conversation in the White House between her and the president and his chief of staff, and she wrote a book. In other words, the question still, I know who she is, but right. what has she done? Oh, well, she, what has she accomplished besides? In other words, nothing. Right. See, what you got was salacious gossip okay. facilitated by modern technology. And part of the problem we're facing is not really racism, but such as certain interests are using racism to compound uh, a problem, which is the emasculation of the country. Mm-hmm. That's the real problem. And they're trying to foster bad relations between black men and white men to facilitate their emasculation of the country. See, if you get emasculation, you wouldn't have all these crazy shootings. They want to talk about toxic masculinity. I want to talk about the real definition of masculinity 
is that it is a set of behavioral standards, a matrix of behavioral protocols that cause men to act in a more or less acceptable way. In other words, when a male uh, has adopted masculine protocols, he becomes a man. Mm -hmm. He's a man of peace until his heroism and bravery is called for. You get these gay boys, they want to look masculine to look, go around and spend hours in the gym working out. So what? That don't mean you have nerve. I know some little bitty guys, runts, that got more balls than somebody that looks like he's a Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. Because they'll stand and deliver. See, it's about behavior. That set, that matrix of behavioral protocols that makes a man a man. And see, that's why you have no peace in the ghetto because men are supposed to be about promoting order, prosperity, and peace. We don't because we don't have that masculine thing in us. We've got too much bitch. Mm. Good, right? See, you take the typical thug, the hood rat, Mm. What you got is a bitch. You got a lesbian in a boy's body. Mm. Lesbian and a boy in the hood are raised the same way, like girls, dysfunctional girls. The boys like Nookie. The lesbian likes Nookie. The boy got boy plumbing. If the fairy godmother or something waved the magic wand and the lesbian woke up with boy plumbing tomorrow morning, there'd be no difference. That's what's going on. Mm. Yo, man, you know it's all about man pimping. No, it ain't cool. It is playing bitch. <laughs> and you know what? There's women out there, they want a man. They want the old school man back. Oh, they do. They want the old, it. See, this, is, this, this is the real secret. Mm -hmm. The overwhelming majority of women, white and black, want that. Yeah. But they're getting told that they're freaks for thinking that way. <laughs> but they're not. They're right. normal. This yeah. abnormal stuff is not normal. Yeah, like all this equal stuff. Like how are we equal if you're not doing the same work I'm doing? If you can't lift you that know, much, I can lift. Let me say something about equality. Mm -hmm. The real thing is it's about equality of work not mm. equality of status or equality of ability. Yes, sir. Because it's about yin and yang, and it's a balance. The two forces, male and female, should be in balance. Male and female are not the same, but there are some overlapping points. You've seen that yin-yang image where yes, it looks like a black raindrop and a white raindrop mm. with a little thin part of the black is next to the thick part of the white and the little thin part of the white is next to the thick part of the black. Yes, sir. What that stands for is that there are some overlapping things where women can do them. It's just that men can do them so much better. And then you go to the other side of the circle. Men can do them a little, but women do it so much better. Right. And you makes a complete picture where there's an equality of circumstance, but they are different colors because they represent different things. It's like, what is more valuable, a peach or a pear? Mm. Except in this case, pears are supposed to like peaches and peaches are supposed to like pears. Mm -hmm. Pears and apples can grow from the same tree, literally. You got to deal with uh, setting head up. But even if they grow on the same tree, an apple and a pear is not the same thing. Mm. But they can be of equal value. So it's about the equality of work, not the equality of circumstance or situation. Well, how come men can do it but women can't? Well, how many guys can knock up the same woman at the same time? One. How many women can one guy knock up a whole bunch? Mm -hmm. You know, it's still got to do with sexual dimorphism. How many bulls are in a cow's herd? 
One, hmm. how many cows are in a bull herd? However many he can have. I know, Judge, I'm glad you brought that up. I was thinking about in a day and era where alpha men are not that many or in supply, we'll be okay for alpha guys to get as many, as many women as they can handle. Well, you know, I've had professional women get in round table discussions with other women where I'm present saying, you know, men like me, that we ought to share him because we run into so many. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Take care of business. Right. And you fuss about you don't feel like being bothered. Well, I might. And you can take a rest while I'm getting what I want. When I want a rest, you can have him for that time so he can take care of all of us rather than <laughs> you running around. And by the way, this feminism is recreating the justification for a harem or a sereglo, mm. where one guy is capable, he can take care of the women that the other incapable males can't. I like you that. Know, oh, yeah, it's coming. It's to that point now. Yeah, you got to be, you got to have your mind together. You got to have your work ethic together. Mm -hmm. You got to be able to think. And if you're running around trying to hustle, you're not contributing to the pie, you know. Just leeching off of what's there, not adding anything to it. Mm -hmm. wow. So, you know, how many uh, husbands did one of Solomon's wives have? <laughs> Zero. Yeah, one, him. Right. How yeah. many husbands did Pharaoh's wife have? Just one. One. Right. How many wives did the Pharaoh have or the, the Sultan have or did uh, uh, Solomon have? Mm. As many as they want. What could have it? You got Solomon as a Jew. Uh, You've got the Sultan as Islamic. Mm -hmm. You know, you got all those English kings that had all of the substitute harems. So, you know, it ain't nothing new. It's just like Islam says, four wives and unlimited concubines to the extent that you can afford. Now, I have met women that don't want to vote for a woman as president, but they're okay with sharing a man as long as he take care of business, like you said. Yeah. Like, I, I've run into sisters and white women say, mm -hmm. I've worked for a woman, never again in hell do I want <laughs> that to happen. So why do I want one to run stuff? Right. Because they know they can. <laughs> I ain't got a problem with a man running shit. Now, but women do, like, when you talk to women about this, honestly, a lot of them do have a problem sharing a man. It's like they, they don't want to share, but they sharing their man anyway. A lot of them don't. But what mm -hmm. I suggest to the women, in fact, Sherazad Ali said it in a book she wrote. She mm -hmm. said women are honest with each other, and they've got a male friend who they consider a brother or they're close to him. Ask him or think back to other male friends or brothers and say, honestly, how many of the men that they've known, not physically intimately, but just closely in life have had just one woman? <laughs> it ain't going to happen. It might be more than one at a not at, you know, it might be sequential. Right. But it ain't happening. And the more desirable your man is, the more he's driven. You know, like, that's one thing about politicians. They've been subject to all kinds of scandal. If you think salaciously and you act like you're running the tabloid, it's because they're herd bulls. Mm -hmm. It's just like, what's that joke? A young bull was standing <laughs> on the side of a hill with his father, and they were looking down at all the cows. And the young bull said, Dad, when I grow up, uh, you know I mean all of those cows are gonna be mine? He said. Dad said, "Yep." He said, "Well, Dad, you mean all of mine?" He said, "Yeah. In fact, I'm getting ready to turn them over to you now. I'm getting too old." <laughs> he said, "Dad, you mean if we run down there, we can screw them all?" He said, "Nope. We can walk down there and screw them all." <laughs> <Take the energy. laughs> yes, yes, sir. And see, the feminists hate that, but you see. Uh, there is a movie out now. It's called Alpha. And actually, Alpha is not a male dog. It's a female wolf. Okay. All right. But it's supposed to be the first dog. Mm -hmm. uh, these guys are discussing hunting. 
and where you start off, you get this young guy who is the son of the chieftain. And they discuss how vital this one yearly hunt is to the survival of the tribe. Mm -hmm. But they say every time we have this uh, this hunt, some don't come back. So in other words, your task as a man is to put yourself in a position where every time we've had this hunt, some have failed to return because they got killed. Mm -hmm. and walk with the ancestors, but it's your obligation and your glory to keep it up. See, that's what it's really about being a man. But, mm -hmm. oh, that's different. That's days in the past. Well, it could be tomorrow, you know. You've got mm -hmm. close warming. You've got a lot of land that's getting wiped out by the rising sea levels. You've got drought. You're going to have famine, crop failures. You're going to have crowding, a lot of warfare as people got to fight again. It's a matter of, you know, who's going to eat day after tomorrow or a star. Mm -hmm. So masculinity, which is humankind's uh, way of dealing with stress and danger, will have to become more paramount. But right when it's about to happen again, these clowns in this country are trying to destroy it. Hmm. Remember, it's not about looks and appearance. It's about behavior. It's about a behavioral matrix, a set of protocols where the masculine human male becomes his own control factor, where you don't need police for law and order. Mm. You know what, Judge? It's, it's interesting you say that kind of thing about I have a supervisor job at one of my jobs I do, and the women don't have no problem with me how I talk, and you know I got this voice, but it's be the men that they can. Oh, you talk in a certain tone I don't like, but the women like that. Oh yeah, <laughs> they like that. They stern, like you know, yeah, he throw the table, yes sir. But it'd be the guys that complain because a lot of them like single parent homes or just very yeah, feminine. They got women and stuff, but they're feminine. They didn't see men, let alone alpha men. They're beta boys, soy boys, and they should be in a subsidiary position. They got taught to be there by their mammy, so they didn't get the man training. Now, the mm -hmm. women, get, and by the way, it turns them on. They get right. hot, wet, and bothered. <laughs> <laughs> it, it helps. It helps. I'm not saying that. You know, I'm just saying, I, I hear what you're saying, Judge. Yep. Words, never get nookie off your look. Get it off of your masculinity. That's some problem. Yeah, a lot of guys need to hear what you're saying. I just think you're so relevant right now yeah, because well, we're not getting this. Guys, as a man, the problem is, is your masculinity lacks. Well, yeah, I'm going to the gym. That's not the kind of masculinity I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. The kind of masculinity I'm talking about, the women can sense. They get wet in their panties when they run into it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Look like a donut. You can get over because, like they say, you either may have a physical bulk or you got the bank account. You know, one will do as good as the other, and the bank account will do better in the long run. I know that's right. Yes, sir. But uh, it's just refreshing to have these kind of conversation because a lot of times they're trying to censor people. Like, you tell the truth, that's hate speech. Telling the truth about what's going on is hate speech now. Yeah, hate speech is <laughs> truth. There's always been a defense in American law, an absolute defense. You know what it is? Truth. Mm. Wow. See, that's the way to cut off defamation or uh, uh, action. Mm -hmm. This led true. All right, let's test it. I claim it's true. Wow. You a punk ass. All right. <laughs> I'll take that position and I can prove your ass is a punk ass. All right. <laughs> and I got to ask you something about this. I mean, I. What are your thoughts about Rita Franklin? Are you familiar with her? I mean, have you ever met the lady before? Or are you familiar with her works? And I'm familiar with her work. Okay. I, well, I mean, she's not that much older than me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm familiar with it. What are your thoughts about her legacy? Excellent. She wasn't my Favorite art. Okay. 
but I always liked it. Mm. You know, it's like she likes strong men, too. Like, she values strong black men. Yeah. You know, she's from Memphis. Right. Um, strong women like strong men. I like strong women. I don't like any little weak, mushy woman that, you know, you walk all over. Right. Because, like, what is she adding to my mix? That's like an ego problem. I don't want somebody that just reflects me back. Come on, show me something else. That's true, too. I'm going to stand up and posture in front of a mirror and get the same thing you're giving me. My mm -hmm. ego does not require that. Well, let me ask you this, like, about, about the Aretha. She, yes, definitely was born in Memphis, and her house still stands. And a black woman owns that house right now, but the city, I don't know what's going on. They're trying to, you know, I know you deal with the Lorraine Motel back in the 80s. Like, I told somebody uh, when I went there. I was, my idea to make the damn thing a museum. Right. But, you know, but they don't. Suggs, Randy Wade, uh, Walter Bailey, not the one that's on the county commission as a lawyer, but the one that owned the Lorraine, Lorraine Motel. Right. <laughs> and you had A.W. Willis, too. You say A.W. Willis. Willis. He put the package together. A.W. Willis collapsed, had two weeks to live, turned out, and the Army Bailey's office submitted the package that he had gotten pre signed, and then they claimed they were the founders. It wasn't him, it was A.W. Willis, Joe Brown, Randy Wade, uh, Chuck Scruggs, and Walter Bailey, no relation to the Army Bailey. So, when is, how y'all gonna tell that story? That story needs to be told then. Why? Is not I'll tell it. I'm telling it to you. It'll get out there. <laughs> yes, sir. But well, what I'm saying is, like, you know that movie, The Founder, about Ray Kroc, who didn't found McDonald's, but he took it to the next level? Well, I was there when for the first, very first McDonald's. Mm -hmm. You know what the secret to McDonald's was, don't you? No, no, sir. It was not about selling hamburgers. It was selling and paying for real estate, but you paid for it by selling burgers. So oh, yeah. I, I attended a lecture. The first one they had was in this huge parking lot in Pasadena, outside mm -hmm. of L.A. It was dark, the same color, British racing green. Mm -hmm. You see some Jags that color. Mm -hmm. And the guy that started it invented these milkshake machines, you know, the kind with the metal container with the rod. They put the ice cream and stuff in it and then stick it up over the rod. Mm -hmm. and they put half of it in a glass and then you get the rest in the metal container yes, sir. well that's what he got started with so you just walk up to any side of it from this huge parking area and you got a milkshake and I think they had three cent burgers and you'd buy some of those and then somebody bought the property so uh, he had to move, and he got another property not far from there, and then somebody bought that, and then it was quicker than with the first one. Then he bought another one, so I guess he just got the idea of selling real estate, you know, but paying for the note by selling burgers. I mean, that actually, like, yeah, you talking about Ray Kroc, he didn't, you know, he didn't find McDonald's, but he, the McDonald brothers actually made McDonald's, but that's how he got it from them. He did start buying the real estate. That's how he took McDonald's from the McDonald's brother. Well, but the guy that did that was the one that invented the milk mix. Right, right. Ray Kroc. Yeah, definitely. Ray Kroc. That was what they started off selling milkshakes, and then they added three cent burgers. Yeah, but he took it from the McDonald's brothers by doing that. Yeah, he took it by getting the real estate part down. Because in the movie, it talks about that. Well, uh, Ray Kroc is played by well, Michael I didn't see the movie, but I heard the man give a yeah. lecture at UCLA one time. Ray Kroc. I can't even remember his name, probably. What yeah, that's the guy. That's the guy. But The Founder is a good movie to look at because he showed you how American white businessmen operate and how they're ruthless like that. Because he was very tenacious and ruthless and strategic but how he got the business from the McDonald brothers. Yeah, well, they were very ruthless and tenacious to him. And by the way, it kills me when somebody says, it was just beer, man. Dude might have been stealing, wasn't worth his life. We'll see when somebody's got to deal with a ruthless business atmosphere. Mm -hmm. it might be. Shoot this fool. He's <laughs> that is that's true. I agree with you, Judge. You're right about that. I don't think it's a dumbass to go out there and start stealing. Right. Yeah, how many times have I heard you talking stuff before? Man, somebody just ripped my new car, man, new battery out of my car, man. 
Mm. Well, man, I've been hanging out with my shotgun, man. Where you catch me some food? I'm going to waste his ass. Mm. Well, if you go, you already said what prompted what you protesting about right now. Mm hmm. Kind of interesting. Wow. What do you think should be done? Like, the woman with the Aretha Franklin home, like, they're trying to take it away from her some type of way or not compensate her properly. They, well, they have to. See, you can exercise eminent domain if the acquisition or reacquisition of the thing is in the best public interest. So they can uh, okay. get all title from the state so the state can re. Both the title exercise them in the domain, they have to pay you for the reasonable property value of the thing they're taking back. So, yeah, they can certainly come in and do that and make it a, you know, a monument. I mean, it is already, yeah. So, I was saying is, so they could just, I mean, like, okay, with the Lorraine, Lorraine Motel, they were about to demolish it, right? It was about to get demolished? Well, yeah, that was the idea. So y'all was able to stop that, though, right? I mean, like, what was well, well, nobody was coming in to take it. It was just that it was a whole house. It was <laughs> right? It was been used on the whole track for years. Even King, when he was in there, was a whole house. Yeah, because he didn't stay there. Really. He stayed there. He, he stayed walk, somewhere else. He, did, he wasn't supposed to be there because it was on the whole track. Yeah, they got so, him killed. Mm -hmm. Thing was, is that they weren't trying to take it. It was just that the owner, uh, Walter Bailey, not the one that's still around being right. the attorney, but mm -hmm. the Walter Bailey that owned the Lorraine Motel was ready to get rid of it. Mm. So I know with the, the, the Aretha Franklin birth home, like they, they try to uh, demolish it at one point and move it to another place, another location. It caught on fire, but the structure still remained intact. So I guess they just, it's weird that, you know, now is the place that is like a monument, right? Like I went there the day she died. It was very powerful. It seems like a very powerful magnetic thing, you know, uh, but it would be only fair if the woman could get some money, but you said they don't probably get anything for it. They could just take it from her and just give her whatever market value is. Did you ever see Lady Sings the Blues? Yes, sir. What did you think of that? Uh, I thought it was not accurate, but it was entertaining. My aunt, who actually looked like her name was Bertha Hint, mm -hmm. for 10, 11 years, she used to be Billie Holiday's roommate. Now, Bertha Hint looked a little darker than Diana Ross and had the same kind of build. Mm -hmm. and Bertha Hint could not stand that movie because they faked it so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like that thing with the dope problem, it wasn't as bad as they put it off in the movie, according to Bertha Hint. That was my aunt. Okay. By the way, she, she had a wound up with a PhD, and she became head dietitian in a hospital in the Beverly Hills area called Cedars of Lebanon, where all the rich folk went. So wow. She died in the 90s. She'd written a bunch of poetry. Is it available online to read, or how I get yeah, access? Again, you might be able to find it. Oh, that's amazing. But it goes back to what we talked about, what love, what love's got to do with it. That a biopic about Tina Turner, how they lied on Ike Turner, how they grossly yeah. misrepresented him. Because even Tina Turner said they did it, overdid it. She said, yeah. said they overdid it. See, they had a message. They tr See, they've been trying to systematically destroy manhood. Right. They call it toxic masculinity, but there's no such thing. What they're calling toxic masculinity is essentially the absence of masculinity. Hmm. Remember, masculinity is a set of behavioral protocols. Mm -hmm. Behavioral protocols. Uh, you you breaking up. You said a, a masculinity is behavior protocols, you said? Yeah, I define it as that matrix. Hello, Judge. Judge. Yeah. Yeah, you were breaking up. I couldn't hear the last part. Hello? You there? Yeah, I'm there. I can hear you now. I said I define masculinity as, quote, that matrix of behavioral protocols that more or less control the male human 
in his actions. Mm -hmm. It's what makes men. It's a set of behavioral standards that he gets brainwashed with growing up. So he finds it extremely difficult to deviate from those standards. Mm. It's called socialization and acculturation. Mm -hmm. And when they keep, they change the socialization and acculturation of males so that young males are not conditioned to behave in a masculine fashion, you have a lot of violence. As we see play out right now. Yes, sir. Yeah. Fight like a man. No hitting below the belt. Mm-hmm. But that will happen to our education system. The kids are out of control because a lot of women heading everything. <laughs> yeah, and I'll tell you about that. Mm -hmm. uh, a friend of mine, Cliff Stewart, myself, another guy named Ron Chappelle, who's now Dr. Ron Chappelle, mm -hmm. we ran a playground, one of the worst in L.A., but every Wednesday we take 200 first through seventh grade kids to movies in downtown L.A. We got UCLA to provide transportation. I was just the three of us, and we would get these kids behaving like they were angels. Patrons would say they didn't even realize kids were in the movie theater, so we could go anytime we wanted. Mm -hmm. But there were nine or ten sisters that were doing a program with somewhere between five and ten kids. And when they'd bring them, the nine or ten of them couldn't keep these ten kids in line. And the three of us young males would have to straighten them out so we wouldn't lose the privilege. Mm. So that masculine input was an, uh, enabled us to control these males. One of our more interesting young men was a skinny 12, then 13-year-old kid who became the singer Barry White, the late Barry White. Mm -hmm. And one of the other kids, same age, we couldn't save him because of his mother, so we couldn't get him out of the swamp, so he became the baddest alligator in the swamp. That was Tookie Williams who started the Crips. Mm -hmm. Last person they executed on California's death row. But like the, I guess the thing about that was like it's like Schwarzenegger was going to pardon him if he admitted to doing the crimes and he didn't want to admit to doing those crimes that he was accused of. Like he did a lot of bad things, but he said I didn't do those bad things. So he had a man code, right? At the end, right? He had a, a moral code. You would say, yeah, he did. We kind of put it in his head when he was twelve, thirteen years old. We kept talking about manhood. He adopted that. Mm -hmm. Uh. So there are some interesting stories over the years in between that illustrated that. Mm -hmm. But we tried. We didn't have too many single mamas. And so what was the remedy for single moms? It's like they pick, I mean, women select certain type of guys, right? I mean. They don't select anybody. They didn't want to get knocked up. Okay. That they way. pick somebody and somebody they think is pretty. So you might have a situation where the woman's got eight, nine, ten kids by six, seven, eight different baby daddies, and one or two of the kids don't look like the rest of them, and they may or may not do well if the dad is cool and gets involved. So really, it, it, the problem is the women are uh, yeah. causing these problems that we're having right now. The women is the women. There's a remedy to keep your legs closed until you get married, or you can exercise some sound discretion off of who you sleep with or be responsible and use birth control. I think last count they had 62 different kinds of birth control. You can talk about guys using rubbers, but the only foolproof version is what the woman uses. And then uh, too often it's like, man, what's wrong, man? Oh, man, I ain't had none, man. Oh, man, you won't get laid, man. Go down on 27th Street, man. You know where they got that cul-de-sac, man? They got old fat broad up there with two gold teeth in front of a mouth. Time to a man. <laughs> you walk down the street, man. You can go do that right when we get through talking, man. And just walk down and just look up. If she's sitting out there and say, oh, damn. 
And when she get you get her attention, say, "Damn, baby, you so fine." I bet you she give you some for half hours out. Mm, wow. And then see, did you get in? Yeah, man. You know, fast smelly, bro. But man, I need to get it off, man. It's been a long time since I got some, man. I couldn't tell whether I was doing it or fold, man. But I got off. <laughs> but yeah, I'm. She thinks she's fine. Yeah, I'm fine. All these men love me. No, they just, you know, you a quick lay. Right. What about the, I meet women that are very educated and very accomplished and they, they still single. They want kids, but they approaching 50. And what's the issue then? I mean, you got a class well, of women. Guys, well, you know what it is. Some of them just have lousy attitudes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They are okay <laughs> as long as they're at a distance, but you wouldn't want to take one of them home and have to deal deal with them every day. No, just have fun with them. I mean, be honest with you. Yeah, no, for, <laughs> for benefit, leave it at that. Yeah, but they, they, can they realize they own that they are their own worst enemies? Though it's not no, the, the black men. It. Okay, they do not realize that. I say, no, baby, it ain't. It ain't what's wrong with the dude. It's just you difficult to get along with. Men just scared they don't like strong women. No. Well, some don't, but some don't care. Some like it. But you've got a disagreeable streak to you. Yeah. I know a woman was telling me about her son-in-law. She was very disappointed in him because she don't like how her daughter treats her son-in-law. Like, she just, he's henpicked, and she tried to tell him to get some balls. And he's 35 yeah. years old, but, I mean, he is who he is. And he got kids that look up to him. He got sons that look at him, get yeah, involved well, about his mom, about his wife. That's my shit. Mm-hmm. See, real women don't like that because it builds bad habits. It's like, okay, your ass in charge. What we gonna do now? What do you mean? What we gonna do now? Well, you've been practicing being in charge. What we gonna do now? Somebody just broke in downstairs. What we gonna do? Well, you gonna go down and see to them. I mean, but yeah, but you know, I done got out that habit being around you. Right. Don't say even though women want a man to take charge, though. Don't say it, but a lot of men want this shared responsibility. No, take charge. Yeah, but you know what the whole deal is about the deference that a woman is supposed to be giving the guy? Mm. It's like you don't always need your car insurance, but you make those payments just in case you do. Right. If a woman isn't willing to take care of her side of the bargain and make those payments, then it's very reluctant. Uh, well, not it's very, but a lot of guys are very reluctant to make the rest of the commitment mm -hmm. just because you may like the person as long as you don't have to deal with them, but so much. But if you got to come home to them every day, that may be your worst enemy. Yeah. My thing, my peace of mind is my everything at my home. I just can't help no, no, no women that can't agree. To, to submit to a certain level to what I'm trying to do or take direction. I mean, she could be her own personality, but she got to respect uh, the chain of command. And then so it used to be if you were taking care of your homework or your business at home, mm -hmm. they didn't mind if you slipped and got a little bit of peace on your side hobby. Right, right. <laughs> but a lot of these kids can't take care of their home. They got to do this co-pay, co-partner thing. I'm like, man. Yeah, I know. You can't respect like, them. It's like they got raised by somebody that over mama them. Mm hmm Yeah, there's a lot of kids like that. They got children, and, and so they go, they create another generation of people like that. Exactly. <laughs> and that's disturbing. See, it used to be that a woman knew what a man was supposed to be about, and she encouraged her boys to be that way. Nowadays, they're mad at the daddy, so they don't want the boy to be anything like daddy. So they tried to raise the boy to be something other than daddy. And what they wind up doing is raising something else is not good to anybody. I hear you, Judge. You, you sure tell him? You just tell him like it is, man. You ain't pulling no punches. Is, I'm man. just saying this from a man's perspective. See, there's another thing. You don't have a daddy around. You don't hear the men talk about the women. All you hear is the women talk about the men. Right. Why would you want to be one of those things that women talk bad about? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you ain't hear another side of the story. Dog, all of them dogs. Okay. I'm a dog. Hey, dog, what's happening, man? Where you see these bitches, man? That's why we get to thinking about women close to us as bitches. That's because they've been calling us dogs. Except the thing is, is they are our elders. So we get brought up 
thinking of ourselves as dogs. Right. So you lay down with dogs, you get fleas, right? We all in the same game. That's where that N word came from. We didn't say that, but I saw it developing in the 70s where you got all these single parent females. They were mad at the boy's daddy and they started calling them all kinds of hens this and hens that. And the boys just heard hens this and they ain't nothing but dogs. They I hear you, honey, all of the dogs, all these hens is after the same thing. They get to thinking of themselves that way. Yeah. So, I mean, like. Although nobody used that word. So, Judge, you know, you're going to get a lot of a lot of women that be listening to this show. They get mad when you be on the show talk about what you talk about. Goddamn. I give less than a goddamn. <laughs> I'm speaking truth and wisdom, and they need to learn from it and they have a much better time than some of them are having with their miserable existences right now. You know what's interesting? They ain't running around looking for a girlfriend, so forget that. I know what's you interesting. Know? Go ahead, so I'm sorry, sir. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm just trying to convey observations and some reality. Uh, realities are what they are, whether you like them or not. It is like you say an inconvenient truth. That's right. Inconvenient truth. And like I was thinking about a couple of things. One was like the, the girl from uh, TLC, the, the, the music group, Chili. Like she said she don't date nothing but white men that other black women should date outside the race. But it's like, we were talking about earlier, is it a problem with the man or is it a problem with you? Both. Mm. See, the secret to slavery was it didn't work without the complicity of the black woman. Mm. The black man, on the other hand, was supposed to have kept it from happening, but the black woman made it happen. Mm. She's been collectively mad at black men for allowing it to happen and disrespecting black men because it happened. And allying herself with white men because that gives her an advantage. White men have white wives at home and black women on the side to play with. Mm. Wow. And just let me ask you this question before. I mean, I know it's like they. I'm like, not down at all, sisters. It's just that's the way it works out sometimes. It's not good. Well, I think that we should have an honest dialogue between us. Not and they, they call me misogynistic and all kinds of other stuff. And I say, hey, you know what? I've been laid an awful lot in my life. And you don't exactly strike me as the kind I would have liked to have been laid by when I was really deep into getting laid. So, <laughs> hell. I heard that. And speaking of I want to ask you about this. I know that Rita Franklin, like, nine-hour marathon funeral, a lot of people, may, you know, we got social media now, so people can really respond and have a voice. And folks were talking about how the bishop, I guess, uh, put his hands on the young lady singer, uh, Ariana, Grande, Ariana Grand. She sung, and people felt like she was uncomfortable with him, like, putting his hand around her waist. They said he groped her breast on, you know, national he, television. He said anything? Well, she didn't say anything, but she, you know, he said he apologized for the miss. You know, he was joking with her about her name being. Shut her mouth and they said, when she complains, I'll say something. Yeah, but you know how people are now. People get all afraid. I know how they are. They need to get themselves some business. Because she wore, I mean, they were talking about how, how uh, Bill Clinton and Reverend Jesse Jackson were looking at her because she had a real short dress on. Not oh, Well, yes, of course. See, what the hell? It's called Boys and Girls 101A and 101B. It works that way. So you got a bunch of lesbians and folk with XX chromosomes that wish they had an XY and others who are otherwise anti-man and they want to get upset. That's why women all throughout history have tried to dress sexually and alluringly to get the attention of men. That's why through the bird kingdom, the mammal kingdom, and every other goddamn thing, you got sexual attraction. Guess what? That's reality. So just because you suddenly don't like it in the last 10, 15 years doesn't mean it's changed. And you I know? was, yeah. She got her attention that she wanted. The thing is, yeah. people get taught, you know, act like you do in front of the camera as you do when the camera ain't around. Okay, fine. If the woman ain't complaining, then shut the hell up. It's none of your goddamn business. I mean, it's like she got a, it's like she got the the attention that she wanted because she she haven't said anything about it. Well, she did it. Nobody made her go do that. But mm -hmm. it's like money. Mm -hmm. 
there's nothing against the law about having legitimate currency of the United States of America in your pocket, right? Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with a babe looking fine. Right. Definitely nothing wrong. But if you walk down in the hood and got the flash in your bankroll, what the hell is going to happen to you? You get robbed. Yeah, you know, people look at you and hijack your ass. Mm-hmm. So what do you do? You keep it in your pocket and you don't flash it. Right. If you got all of the flesh to flash and you're a fine female and you flash it, the least is going to happen is the street guys are going to look at your ass. Right, because you know, if you're a man, you like women, you're going to look. I'll be looking. You know what I'm saying? The radar works. That doesn't yeah. turn off because some goddamn lesbian is bent out of shape about it. <laughs> oh, if you get married, you're still going to look. I don't care. Yeah, the radar, <laughs> even if you get over age, you're right, you going to look. The yeah. radar is all automatic. That's right. So she wanted to be looked at, otherwise she wouldn't have worn it. Just like if you wanted to get your ass hijacked or challenge somebody, you flashed your money. Right. Yes, sir. You have had a result you didn't anticipate. Mm. Yeah, you got a right to wear whatever you want that you're a woman. But you ought to have sense enough to expect the reaction that is going to generate whether or not you intended to go that far. And remember, there are a lot of people that don't have matters. Yes, sir. And there used to be a rule in American law. There was no harm in asking at least once. Mm. Well, Judge, I want to thank you once again for this wonderful and very... Now, you uh, should treat women nicely, but I mean, goodness, you wear a micro mini dress to a funeral? Yeah. What's your point? You're going to, you know, it's a woman, it's a corpse. Who are you trying to appeal to? Well, you know, it's the thing, though. It's, it is double standard because, you know, the Me Too movement, they they took a hit recently with uh, the accusation of the Asia Ar- Argento, the Italian actress who accused Harvey Weinstein of raping her. Yeah, they said she, you heard about that, right? 17-year-old boy, yeah. Right, and, and she was a... Pay off and some little thing that was uh, gender neutral was telling on her because he wanted justice or he wanted justice done. Right. Then at the board day, he killed himself supposedly, and he won to pay the payoff. He did the payoff for, I believe. Yeah, was- oh, oh. He's strange bird. <laughs> well, I don't appreciate being called that the masking program. Well, let's put it this way: you know, you got a dick, you ain't got a pussy. So what the <laughs> hell are you supposed to be if you reject being a man and you're not a woman? He, she, that leaves it. So you're an it. Well, you know, it was interesting. I had a, a college classmate, a uh, former college classmate. Her her sister was mauled by a cougar up in Washington State, I believe. And she didn't identify with that. She she identified as they. She she was, like I guess, gender neutral or whatever. There ain't no such damn thing as gender neutral. Human beings have had he, she, it. Mm. In every damn language since day one, he, she, it. And they keep coming up with fluid gender. That's a bunch of crap with some fluid mind that needs to gel into having good common sense. Mm. Well, you know, human males and females have been about the business of boys and girls 101A and B and attracting each other. That's why we've got seven point some billion people on this planet. It works. So you want to cut that off? So why are people allowing them to do this stuff in educational classrooms like in California and other places. Well, they have, look, foolishness and being a fool can be very widespread. Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's a well, Judge, I want to thank you once again for another thought-provoking and uh, enlightening conversation. And Judge, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you if they want to have well, these conversations? Catch me, even though I don't have the blue check, it's Judge Joe Brown TV on Twitter. Okay, Judge. I will answer you, but I might get on your last nerve if I call you foolish, but I will <laughs> if I think you are. And like I say, I'm about manhood and womanhood. I don't care about it, the in-betweens. Uh, it may be their right to practice it, but it's my right to call it foolish. Well, thank you, Judge. You are entitled to your opinion. Thank you so much for sharing it with the rest of the world. Like People are really uh, enjoying yeah. these conversations. And remember, it's about 
equality of value, mm. not equality of status. Thank you, you so much. You don't understand the difference. Go develop your cognition and your cognitive skills until you do understand the difference. Thank All you right, so brother. I'm out of here. Well, thank you so much, Judge. We love you madly, man. Keep on producing and pushing. Okay. Take it easy. Yes, sir.